Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm doing another day in the life of a marketing manager, but before I start my work day, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning just to get that out of the way. I've been trying to do some morning cleaning um, because it just makes me feel kind of like I have my shit together a little bit, but also prevents me from procrastinating later on because whenever I wanna procrastinate, the first thing I do is like, I need to clean. And it's like the first task that I jump to. So if we just get some cleaning out of the way, then I can focus on work. I have a relatively chill work day today. It's a Thursday and I actually don't have any meetings on Thursdays, which is awesome, unless somebody books one with me um, last minute. But that means I can really focus on doing some deep work today. And I wanna get a head start on some of these videos that need to be done over the next couple of weeks. We're just working on some product videos for one of our product launches. And I think that's gonna be mainly what I work on today but I think there's gonna be a few things here and there that I wanna tackle, but we can go through that together in a little bit. All right, before we get started with today's workday, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, which is Cubo. Cubo is the world's first personal online office, which can help you manage and monetize your business. Whether you're an entrepreneur, small business owner, freelancer, it's important to get your presence out there, and I think we all know this by now, but Cubo takes it a step further because it acts like sort of a link tree system, a place where people can find you, message you, schedule meetings with you, and just get an overview of your online presence and what you're currently working on. Cubo allows you to connect with your customers, your prospects, your business partners, Partners with a unique link giving them access to your personal office. In this office, they can see your online status, your schedule, work that you want to show off, and they can directly message you in your office or schedule a meeting, which I think is super helpful. In a world where people can find you in a million places, it really helps having just one hub where people can find all of your links and what you do and have the ability to actually contact you. It's like if you took Zoom, Calendly, Slack, and Linktree and created this one super cute visual office. And I think that a lot of remote working individuals are going to benefit greatly from Cubo. You can customize your profile picture or avatar. When people come to visit you, they get taken to your little reception area where you can lay out different documents or videos on the table for them to view while they're waiting around. If they're visiting you to contact you, they can message you directly if you're online so you can see those instant messages right away or they can message you and you can review those messages later. It also has a built-in meeting scheduling tool so you don't have to worry about integrating with something else and trying to find a different tool for it and trying to pay for it. All they have to do is click schedule a meeting and they can put a meeting time right into your schedule. They can also see your schedule to see, okay, if she has meetings at this time, maybe I'll give her a call at this time. They can also start instant meetings if they see you're online and you don't have anything going on right now. I love that you can also add all of your social profiles to your office so if somebody's visiting you for the first time they can actually quickly browse through your LinkedIn your Instagram your YouTube your Twitter just to see what you are all about if you're a content creator this would be really helpful because you could place your media kit or some videos about you in your office if you're a freelancer I would put some of your portfolio work on the table or if you're a small business owner put your services and rates or your product information on the table and have a video talking about about your brand and what you are selling. This is such a cute digital way of sort of humanizing the idea of remote working. I know that we don't miss actually going into the office, but the benefit of having an office is that people can go there to find you and build a genuine connection with you. Cuba allows you to do that digitally and I think this is such a fun tool to integrate into your business. If you wanna give this awesome all-in-one communication tool a try, and start connecting with your remote team, your clients, your prospects in a 
better way in your personal digital office, make sure to check out the link in my description box. I'm gonna link my online Kubo office in the video description as well so you can see exactly what you can do with Kubo. But thanks again, Kubo, for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the workday. I've got quite a couple of things that are on my list. Um, so the product videos, as I mentioned, because I got a message yesterday from my team saying that um, we just released the newest version to staging. So that means I can actually go in and start testing slash start creating content with it. There's a competitor that I want to analyze today um, just to see what they're doing with their marketing and their messaging right now. We're really trying to figure out a way where we can position ourselves a little bit differently than some of our more major competitors. And so we're kind of looking for inspiration from other competitors and maybe not direct competitors, but other people in the industry who do their messaging a little bit differently and seem to be doing well. Also, if you guys didn't know, Google Analytics is going to be switching away from their universal analytics properties and sort of view. I think it's at that, uh, uh, as of July 2023, they're no longer going to be sending any data to their universal analytics dashboards, which means that if you're still using their UA dashboards, you're going to need to switch over to their new version, which is called GA4 or Google Analytics 4. And honestly, if you are using Google Analytics right now and you're still on their universal analytics version, I would recommend doing the switch right now so that you have several months of historical data before you are required to make the switch. It's better to have that overlap instead of just starting in July of 2023 and then potentially missing some dates due to like in implementation delay or something like that. So we just got it installed yesterday to one of our sites. I didn't realize actually that it wasn't installed for both of our sites. It was for our um, initial site and then our new site has not been tracking with GA4 yet. So I want to look more into GA4 today and see what I can learn about it, see what the differences are because I really haven't been staying in touch with sort of what's going on in the Google Analytics world. And then if I have time, I want to play around in Hotjar as well. We recently started to use Hotjar for some of our analytics and sort of just visibility into what users are doing and how they're behaving on our website. So we are going to be running an A-B test soon. So I just want to make sure that I sort of go through things in Hotjar, see what I can track um, for the A-B test in Hotjar, sort of make a list so that when we do run the A-B test, it's really easy for me to be like, okay, this is what I need to look at. These are all the things I need to analyze in Hotjar. And then just sort of have like a to-do list to go through those are my tasks for today. Honestly, the um, analyzing competitors, the GA4, all of that are secondary to the videos, but I just know that I'm not going to be able to spend the entire day just working on videos. Like I will lose my mind. So those tasks are sort of there as things that I can do when I get sick of creating videos. Okay, what I'm actually going to start by doing is just creating a list of thoughts that I want to pull from the app today. I'm really just gonna do like screen recordings of the app and then edit them into the actual video. I've already written scripts for everything, so that's really gonna help me figure out exactly what I need. But to make my job even easier, I'm going to read through the scripts and then just um, figure out exactly what screens I need, put them in a list, and then yeah, it'll just be way easier that way. I have my tester phone here. I am going to make sure that I have the most updated version. So because I am on iOS, I just go into test flight and hit update. Makes it so easy. Okay, so I've figured out all the screens that I need and I thought I would show you guys how I actually go about recording for like product videos. So what you want to do is actually open up QuickTime Player if you're using a Mac. This is for Mac users, by the way. I'm sure there are other ways that you can do this, maybe with OBS or something on Windows, but this is the quick and easy method of recording your uh, phone device or your iPad device or your screen when you are using a Mac. So I open QuickTime Player and then I will select New Movie Recording. You'll get this little bubble and it'll essentially show up a couple of different things. Like if I select my webcam, it'll record my webcam. I can record from my phone camera now. It's like a new, uh, new feature of Apple's. But what I've done is I've just plugged in my phone to my laptop and then 
under screen, you'll see Angel's iPhone as one of the options. So you can see that I am actually screen recording whatever is on my screen and it'll show up in my QuickTime player exactly as I'm seeing it on the screen. Let me make this smaller so you guys can see the full screen. So if you hit record on your QuickTime player, you can go through and do different actions on your phone. Let's say I'm recording the calendar app. I can scroll through, I can add something. And then once you're done, all you have to do is click stop recording. And then you've got this awesome screen recording of exactly what you did on your phone. This is definitely the easiest way that I found to record my um, device's screen. And what's really cool about it is if you see at the top, you can see um, the time is 9.41 and then there's like full signal bars and a full charge. My phone is actually at half charge right now and it's actually not 9.41. But when you record in this way through QuickTime Player, because it is a Apple software, it'll always, always keep your time as 9.41. That is the standard time if you look at any Apple screenshots ever, they'll all say 9.41. That is just the standard of what Apple uses. There is a reason, I believe it's because it was like first, the iPhone was first created at 9.41 or something like that. I'll find the reason and I'll put it on screen but um, it'll make the signal bars full, it'll make the Wi-Fi bar full, and it'll make the battery pack full. This way, when you're creating any marketing assets, you'll always have these things exactly that way. If you were to record your screen just by doing like screen recording on your phone, it's gonna record your screen exactly as is with whatever current time it is, whatever battery percentage it's at, but if you do it this way, you can just kind of make sure that all of your assets of screen recordings all are sort of like unified in that way. And not to mention, it just feels more professional because that is what Apple wants you to show. So once I've gotten the screen recordings that I want, I just have to hit save, save them to whatever folder I want. And then I've got these amazing little videos of my screen recordings. I don't know if this is like common knowledge, but this is how I was taught um, when I first started doing any sort of like product or sort of iPhone or device videos. And it's the way I've done it ever since because it is so easy. And like I said, it'll always, always be the same in sort of that top information bar that the iPhones have. So I'm gonna go through and actually just create all of these screen recordings now. I'm not gonna record this portion and show you guys just because this is an unreleased product. So I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping the confidential materials confidential, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll come back and show you how I'm putting together the assets in Premiere Pro. Okay, so I've decided to just record the screen recordings for the first video that I'm working on. That way I can piece together the video first and just get it reviewed by my team first just to make sure that it looks the way that they want before I actually go in and put in the work for all the other ones just in case there's something else that they want to see uh, visually. For the actual graphics, I do create everything within Figma. So this is the Figma board that I've created for the storyboard. I'm not gonna scroll all the way over there because I wanna maintain confidentiality. But essentially, this is what the storyboard looks like. I have a background and then you can see as I'm moving through the story that this graphic um, pops in. So what I've done is also just created separate frames. I'll turn on the background so you can see for each of the graphics and the background designs. And then I export these frames um, uh, individually without any of the text or anything like that in it. And then all I have to do is go into Premiere and place these as layers on top of each other. So you can see I added the text within Premiere Pro to keep it simple. And then I have the blob as one layer, the background as a layer, and then this white um, background to place the other layers on top. I can even add like a transition to the blob layer so it sort of uh, transitions in. But what I think I'm gonna do instead of having it cross dissolve in is just have this blob slowly move from outside of the screen towards the middle of the screen. But yeah, that's really it. These nested sequences here, I'm not gonna scroll over them, but these are the video clips that I created with QuickTime Player of the actual screen recording of the app. I did also add this border around it so it looks like you're viewing the screen recording within an illustrated iPhone screen. 
a little sneak peek of what the video is about, but this isn't actually a screen of our app. It's just a mock-up of a receipt that I created. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through and piece together the video now and just sort of get a draft ready so I can share it with my team, um, see what they think, get their feedback. And then maybe in the meantime, while it's being reviewed, I'm gonna start doing some of the analyzation work that I have planned for today because I'm sure I'm gonna need a break from video creation very soon. Okay, I took a little bit of time and did my makeup because I am headed out later. But we're back at the desk and I'm gonna get started on looking into Google Analytics and seeing what the difference is between G4 and UA is. If you didn't know, Google actually offers these courses <laughs> that you can take on different things in their own course platform, which is called Skillshop. I believe most, if not all, of the courses that you can take on Skillshop are free. So if you're a marketer looking to learn um, how to use certain Google tools like Google Analytics or Google Optimize, you can go and take their free courses on there. I highly recommend it. I'm looking at the Skillshop uh, topics now and there's like Google Ads, Google for Education, Google Marketing Platform, um, Google Analytics, Google My Business, YouTube, Google Ad Manager, etc, etc. So you can actually go and click into any of these. Let's say we do Google Marketing Platform. I think if you can familiarize yourself in these Google tools, like really, really get good at it, that is a whole ass marketing job on its own. Like Google Ads, running advertisement, digital advertisement, that is a whole skill and a whole career right there or being a marketing analyst and really knowing how to implement and use google analytics like the back of your hand i love that they offer these things for free to help people get a kickstart whether you're a business trying to learn about these topics or a marketer trying to develop your skills what better way to actually learn about the google tool than through google themselves so we're looking at the google analytics 4 um, course but we're just going to skim through it and i'm going to see what i can learn from this so that i can accurately report back to the team what we should do with GA4. Okay, quick summary of what I learned about GA4. Essentially what's different is that Universal Analytics allows you to track your website, and then they also had a different version that was called Google Analytics for Firebase, which allows you to track your app data. So G4 allows you to track both and it's set up a little bit differently. So instead of having two properties, you have your G4 property and then different data streams that feed into your G4 property. So you can have your marketing website, your iOS app, your Android app, et cetera, et cetera. It's also largely built around users and events instead of sessions. So what that does is it actually deduplicates the interactions that people have with your company across different devices and different platforms. So it kind of tracks not only across platform journey, but looks more at these individual users and the events that they have instead of it grouping all of those events into sessions. This is really great because it's gonna give you invaluable information on your users and how they actually interact with everything that you have going on. They've also sort of simplified the way that they show their data. So before it was like you had all these different reports that covered every single use case that you could possibly have and then you kind of had to dig around to find the actual like information that you needed. The way that it's organized now is it has more sort of summary reports, which you can dig into further, but these summary reports will be kind of reporting on really key insights like how users are interacting with your website, how many people converted. It's going to be a lot more event-based as I mentioned, and it's, it's going to give you insights that you can use right off the bat instead of having to search through a bunch of different reports and sort of analyze that before you can even come to the conclusion that, okay, this means that this user XYZ 
XYZ. They still have sort of that really customizable reporting available, but it's now called your exploration tab. And your exploration tab allows you to build reports based on different events, different segments, different filters, and you can actually save those as segments and audiences to review later. It's also now going to be using machine learning to give you anomaly detections. So if there are outliers based on your uh, filters, it's going to be able to sense those. Essentially, they've just sort of simplified GA4, but also made it more robust in a way. I'm pretty excited to learn more about this. I hope that the learning curve is going to be a lot smaller for people who are just kind of entering this world because Universal Analytics, like Google Analytics, was so hard to use and understand. And that was something I really struggled with when I was studying in school. So fingers crossed that it is going to be a lot easier to understand and the learning curve is going to be a lot smaller. I will keep you guys updated as my company sort of implements J4 and starts to use it. And I'll give you my thoughts on how it is and how I think it compares to Universal Analytics. But yeah, that's kind of my, my understanding of what it is. There's still so much I need to set up on it as well. It's tracking my website's data now, but it's not tracking the app data and I need to set up all my events and all my conversions still, which I've started to make a list of what I should track, what should be conversions, etc. But yeah, this is going to be a whole ass project on its own, but one that's really, really critical to your business and my business because we base so many of our business decisions, our marketing decisions, our game plans on these business insights. So being able to pull this in an easier way is just gonna help the entire team understand and have a clear idea of the direction that we should be heading and what we should be doing next. Like I said, I haven't used it much yet, but I will definitely keep you guys posted on what my thoughts about it are. I think now I'm gonna do a little bit more reading and just read up on this competitor that we are looking at sort of taking inspiration from. And what I'm actually going to do is just open up a Notion doc and just start taking some notes and saving some screenshots of things that I think are working really well on their website. We did schedule a discussion about it tomorrow, so I wanna get this done before the end of the day so that I don't have to think about this tomorrow. It is already dark outside. Ugh, I hate how quickly it gets dark and how early, but it's about 4.30 now. And I just finished recording the audio for the video. So I did a little voiceover. Are you sick of looking for receipts and trying to remember to keep them all in one place? This is the thing about having a small marketing team. It's like my face and my voice is gonna be in so much of the marketing material, but all good. I am used to it, so that's good. If you hear the whirring in the background, it's because I'm making myself a little Korean corn dog. I am heading to an event where there will be hors d'oeuvres, but until then, I just need a quick snack. I think I'm gonna wrap up at the desk now. I did pretty much all of the analytics that I needed to today. Uh, the only thing I didn't do was play around within Hotjar, which I can do tomorrow. I'm just ticking off all the things that I did today. I am gonna go through my Notion just to make sure that I'm leaving notes in all of the tasks that I have going on so that I can continue with these tasks tomorrow. Okay, while I wait for my corn dog, I'm just gonna do a little bit of reading, I think. Also actually kind of related to work because the book that I'm reading is <laughs> about marketing. God, am I addicted to my job? Okay, let me show you guys the book. So I don't have the physical copy of this book. I just got it on my iPad. And I've actually really been enjoying reading on my iPad purely because I have an Apple Pencil and it makes it super easy to highlight, as you guys can see. Actually, can you see? Highlighting and then just having a split screen to write down some actionable notes for work. The book that I'm reading is called Hooked. It's this one here. It's essentially about how to build habit-forming products. It talks a lot about software, which is obviously 
the field that I'm in. But essentially, it tells you sort of why it's so important to create your products to be something that people sort of build a habit around. For example, like checking Instagram is definitely unfortunately one of my habits. Updating my Goodreads after I finish a book is another one of my habits. And all of these different apps have just a little something to them that gives you sort of an instant reward, making you feel good about doing the thing in the app. So on Instagram, I get to see all of these new posts and beautiful aesthetic pictures. On Goodreads, I have been doing a reading challenge this year. So every time that I log a book, I see that status bar of my reading challenge increase and I'm like, yeah, like that just makes me feel so good. It's such a small thing, but it's enough for me to go into Goodreads every time I pick up a book and fill out like the dates that I started, the date that I ended, etc. And then once you get that habit going, you'll get the user to use the app in different ways as well. So now I am on Instagram taking a story of my lunch. I am messaging people on Instagram. On Goodreads, whenever I hear about a book, the first thing I do is I go into Goodreads and save it into my want to read folder. I will sometimes look up like reviews and book summaries within Goodreads. So after I've built that habit, this app has become this sort of like hub for me for that specific thing. And I will just naturally use it for all of these other purposes and reasons related to that thing. I'm only two chapters in, I think. So it's really still just going through different examples of products that have pretty much made people build a habit around it. And then also why it's so important for you to do this um, in order to stay competitive in whatever industry that you're in. I'll let you guys know if I find out any other super useful information, maybe in the next video. All right, here's my corn dog. I still actually haven't had this properly from like the corn dog shop, but um, yeah, this is what I've been eating. I get it from TNT and it comes just like in a package of six and you just air fry them. And honestly, this is already so good. So I can't even imagine how good the one from the shop actually is. Oh, that's so hot. You can see the cheese inside. Let me see if it'll do a good pull. I do have to head out for this event soon. So I am going to just relax and unwind before I have to go to this event. So there is some separation from work to this social thing. I think I'm gonna end today's video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you go and check out my Cubo office in the description box below. But other than that, I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you're in the world and I will see you in my next video.